Naisha McCauley, and you're watching AccessTV.org. Hey, Auntie. Good morning, Shay. How are you doing today? Eh, I'm doing okay, I guess. You guess? It's not like you. You're so sure of yourself. What's wrong? If you saw somebody do something really bad, would you turn them in? It depends on what they did. Well, what if I said I saw somebody rob your store and I didn't tell you? Would you be upset? Shay, do you know who broke into my store last month? No, 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 Auntie. That, it, not, it was a poor choice of words. That's not what I'm talking about. You know who robbed me and you won't say anything. Auntie? I don't know who robbed you. That, that's okay. You don't have to tell me. Look, I look after your kids, and you can't trust me enough to tell me the name of the low-life person who broke into my store. Auntie, keeping up. You don't want to be a snitch? Keeping the secrets of criminals is more important than family, friends, and blood? For the last time, I don't know who robbed your store. That's not what I'm talking about. Yes, you do. No wonder you've been acting so strange here lately. I just don't know, just didn't know what was wrong with you. Listen. I saw the murder that happened on Thursday night. What do you mean? When I came to the store the other night to get the milk for the kids, I was leaving and I decided I was going to get the kids some KFC, so I was walking toward the church and I saw that guy, Auntie, and he, he stabbed that man and then he stood over him and he shot him three times. It, it was absolutely horrible. Did the shooter see you? Yes. He looked at me and he pointed at me and he told me I got to keep my mouth shut. If you recognize him, if you, if you saw him again, would you recognize him? Of course I would. Listen, Shay, you have to turn this man in before it's too late. Are you crazy? I mean, that's like snitching, Auntie, and, and I'll be marked in this neighborhood. Even if the police do get him, everybody's going to look at me like I'm a snitch. Shay, it's not snitching. You were a witness to a murder. Shay, if I saw you kill someone, I would turn you in without thinking twice. This community is suffering because people will not speak up. I'm afraid. Yes, you're afraid, but that don't mean lose faith. Shay, I know you love the Lord, but do you trust Him? That is the question that I have to ask you. Do you trust the Lord? What if I told you it was Wayne and Phillips? Do you trust the Lord? What about your best friend? Do you trust the Lord? Because I trust him with all my heart. And so does she. She's Brandon's mother. She knows her son. I gotta think about this in my auntie. Turn this man in. It is the right thing to do. I know, I just, I gotta go. I'll talk to you. Take care. Thanks. The new normal? This community is saying no. The back-to-back -back homicides this week of Londell Jackson and Antonio Big Dealer Watkins have this community in an uproar. The big story here is the rally to be held in their honor. Both men were murdered viciously. The first victim was 19-year-old Londell Jackson. The second victim, Antonio Big Dealer Watkins. His murder was particularly brutal, according to police sources, because he was killed execution style. Police sources characterized both victims as products of their own environment. 
Community leaders, however, suggest that we should take a look at the tragic deaths because when one person dies in this fashion, it diminishes us all. With us is Pastor Larry Johnson again of the New Faith Ministries. Pastor, please tell the viewers about the rally and vigil that are being held. Well, as you were saying, Kelly, I too take issue uh, with the statement that these two young men were the victims of their own lifestyle. First and foremost, let me say that these men in particular are human beings. Uh, if we start characterizing everyone in this community, you know, in a criminal asset, the end result will be just that. Um, what we need to do is, it's almost as we're saying that uh, the very people that are being held hostage by the social challenges in this community somehow deserve what's happening to them. And, and that's one of the reasons why we're having this rally. Uh, you know, we're not only going to be out, it's, 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 we're coming together to make a stand. Uh, uh, it's almost to say that uh, with the help of the Lord God that the activity in this community will not be the new normal. Criminal activity will not be the new normal in this community. We're out here to make a commitment, a stand, you know. Uh, it's not only a spiritual battle, but it is a, also a, a resource and money battle as well. Uh, the Bible says that faith without works is dead. So what we're going to do is we're going to build a new community center with the package store that we're going to buy. And uh, we're also going to move our monies, as you well know, as we spoke about before, into the community credit union so that we'll have a more economic uh, impact on this community. And uh, we're going to t invest more in the human capital of this community and, uh, and the people that remain here. So are you telling me you can just come in here, change everything overnight, and do that all by yourself? Well, no. I, I, I don't want to do it by myself. I, I can't do it by myself. Uh, uh, we need the help of everyone here, and uh, it, it starts with me. You mean the community has to buy into this vision of yours, Dr. Johnson? Yes, absolutely. A thousand times yes. And uh, we have to do that by making the first step. Uh, and I'm going, I'm making the first step with this vigil. Thank you so much for your time. If you have any information about any of these crimes, you are urged to call the police department's anonymous tip line at 1-800-WITNESS. This is W4 News reporter Kelly Barksdale reporting live in the city's north end via Skype for accesstv.org. You're not doing these shootings. You're not doing these killings. Don't you know if they shoot and kill somebody else, they'll shoot and kill you? How long are we going to suffer a, behind a small number of people that we know are doing these acts in this community and we still allow them to happen over and over and over again? Whose son is going to be next? Whose daughter is going to be next? What mother's gonna be next? What father's gonna be next? What baby, pray tell, is gonna be next? The bullies are flying in the city every day, and we are sick of it. Do you care? Do you care? To let the people at the state house know what's going on in the city of Hartford. We can start with one city, and that's Hartford right now. This is the worst day of my life. A six-year-old. Why do you say that? Because people keep killing people. People keep shooting people. I'm tired of this. A six-year-old, these babies are tired of it. So why aren't these grown people and these teenagers listening? Stop killing each other. Unfortunately, it's a shame that it has to take a tragic for you to fight for, for a problem that's been going on for a long time. I've been a resident of Hartford, and like Ms. Reverend Smith, the community stood for something when we came up. How many more kids are going to die out here? We're killing each other all. the police chief, the mayor, and the governor. Now, they, they were talking about how horrific those crimes were. But listen, I've been involved in all the shootings of Hartford. 
to 2002. Now, now, now watch this right here. I have seen mothers shot down in the streets. I have seen little boys shot down in the streets. I have seen young men shot down in the streets. But I never heard one word from Governor Red. Not one word. Governor, this is your city, and you're the governor, and we demand that you treat us like you treat everybody else. Uh, you, you know, there's some things going to be said here today, and, and, and listen, I'm going to tell you something. God called me to give a word to people in the community, and in this type of environment, I don't care who chose I'm stepping on. Because now we're in the time where we have to step on somebody's toes for folks to get this message. These are young folks dying in the streets. You know, that curfew, that's a waste of time. What do you all have? Who does it come from? All right. And what is this, what is this song about? King's Kids. Enough. 